Hi friends, today we are going to discuss about some USAML equations from first years. So let's begin. So these are MCQs uh, all related to the renal system. Uh, I start to explain and to read uh, renal MCQs first, renal system, okay? So our first question is that a patient a patient present with a chief complaint of unrelenting headache of the spheral months duration her vital signs are significant but a blood pressure 200 to 100 mmhg abdominal ultrasound confirms that confirm the cause of her hypertension okay this means that this patient is suffering from hypertension so uh, decreased uh, perfusion of which of the following structures results in the venin release that is responsible for this patient condition so we know that uh, here the hypertension and increasing blood pressure is due to the excessive release of the renin so what are the conditions in which excessive renin uh, occur okay uh, so the first option is that adrenal gland here they clear uh, another point that is decreased perfusion okay so which uh, structures if they have uh, less blood flow or less blood flow to that area uh, leads to the uh, release of the renin so adrenal medulla if uh, blood less blood flow to adrenal medulla it undergoes uh, necrosis it undergoes infarction okay and it will not release uh, epinephrine and catecholamines so this option uh, will not correct the second option is that efferent arterioles yes we can say in this condition for example this is your efferent arteriole it bleeds to the glomerulus then efferent arteriole so here we have a special type of cell that is juxta glomerulus cells okay they have the capability to release the renin under certain circumstances is the most important condition is that is hypovolemia or we can say hypotension in which less blood perfusion or decreased perfusion to the efferent arterioles it leads to the releases of the renin and this renin causes increasing in the blood pressure needs if it is very excess it leads to hypertension okay so here the second option is very suitable the third option that is distal convoluted tubule no because it will not release any hormone loop of handle this is not suitable question and zona glomerulosa is also related to the adrenal gland okay <coughs> so glomerulosa if less perfusion to this area uh, also it will go in some infarction and it its uh, capability to form hormones it will decrease okay aldosterone will uh, release less and other uh, mineral corticoids glural corticoids they will uh, release less so they will not increase the blood pressure rather they decrease the blood pressure so our best option is the second option that is the efferent arterioles okay the second option is that the following graph uh, was, was obtained by the collecting and uh, assaying urine from a healthy volunteer giving very amount of the glucose by intravenous infusions which, uh, which statement concerning the graph is most accurate so they want to they give us two readings okay number one was urine glucose level and number two the serum serum glucose level and they showed that for example if we increase the glucose ser serum glucose level up to 200 there will be no you no glucose in urine no glucose in this level okay up to here then when we increases from 20 200 ml mmhg toward 400 then it sharply okay a little appearance in the urine that the glucose from here point glucose start to appear in urine start to appear in urine urine but when we reach at this point okay it become directly proportional as we add serum glucose this glucose will appear in urine that it will appear in urine so from here we can conclude a point that whenever the glucose crosses the glomerular filtration they uptake by the proximal convoluted cells 
so they have some range threshold okay threshold absorption of glucose threshold okay that is I think 150 m milligram per deciliter or per 100 ml okay 100 ml urine <coughs> so this is the threshold when glucose in filtration increases up to a level that the all cells become loaded with glucose so this point we can say that the saturation of saturation of tubules that all all tubules start to fill start to load it with glucose so it starts from a point that is 200 to 375 milligram per deciliter start from here and end here when the glucose level reached to 375 milligram per deciliter okay all the proximal convoluted tubules they become loaded with glucose and further addition in the serum glucose they directly appear into the urine they will not absorb by the proximal convoluted cell so our answer we will have to see the answer does the glomerular filtration of the glucose is saturated no glomerulus filtration is always filter okay it have the capability to filter glucose at any level and number second option that is the proximal convoluted tubule glucose reabsorption is saturated at yes is a it is our best option the second third option that is proximal convoluted tubules glucose secretion no a proximal convoluted tubule cannot secrete glucose proximal convoluted tubule glucose secretion no again this option is to try wrong the first one also wrong so our best option is the b option let's move toward the another question <coughs> a 17 year old boy with insulin dependent diabetic mellitus is brought to the emergency department unconscious with the fruity order okay fruity order on his break upon his this is the point you have to remember upon his admission insulin is administrated as the serum potassium level are monitored closely potassium balance is essential for the normal functioning of the excitable tissues such as the muscle and neurons which of the following clinical uh, situation could also put a patient at the high risk of hypokalemia so high calcium diet no it will increase the uh, sh uh, potassium level it is wrong hypoaldosteronism again this is not <coughs> have less aldosterone okay for example this is the tubular cell if less aldosterone so sodium reabsorption will less so instead potassium will go out less so it will lead to no it will lead to hyper not hypo okay and metabolic acidosis no our use of amiodarone no and our uses of the hydrochlorothiazides yes because it is a diuretic and diuretic has the capability to increase the potassium level in the tubules or we can say that it increases the ionic level so when these ions reach to the collecting duct okay at the distal part sodium is it will transport it in and potassium excreted in urine so blood we can see hypokalemia hypokalemia so our best option is c this is the diuretic effect our fourth question is that a 66 year old woman with acute renal insufficiency and unremarkable medial history medical history undergoes a renal biopsy that reveals glomerular capillary subendothelial deposits so glomerular capillary subendothelial deposits so we can see we can see some spikes and domes okay shape like some depositions under the 
uh, basement and uh, endothelial cells okay which are the following symptoms often occur uh, in patient with this diseases so they have a very important key point that is the deposition so in case of SLE systemic lipid erythromatose we can see antigen antibody okay antigen antibody complexes like this it will circulate in the blood and it can accumulate or deposit anywhere in joint leading arthritis in skin leading uh, dermatitis okay and in blood vessels causing vasculitis so in this condition sometime it uh, accumulate okay and with the blood it will leads to the kidney and it uh, cause a deposition in different level of the uh, basement membrane or uh, uh, okay the filtration barriers maybe accumulation under the sub endothelium okay endothelium under the endothelium maybe sometime they accumulate uh, or deposit under the uh, epithelial region so this is I make the this is the squamous cell of capillary basement membrane of the capillary and here then we have the photocytes okay so these depositions in this case we can see here we can see the deposition subendothelial depositions which affect the glomerular filtration rate okay and also leads the inflammatory process and leading to the inflammation necrosis okay inflammation of this area glomerular nephritis so it is related to the SLE so other signs and symptoms we can see that uh, can see in this condition in this type 3 hypersensitivity ecclesia no ecclesia is not a cause ecclesia may be congenital or may be acquired and it is the uh, condition in which the esophagus okay lower esophageal sphincter or lower part they fail to relax so this area become enlarged aortic aneurysm no it is not related esophageal reflex is not and malar rashes yes and morbidly form rashes no so malar rashes is a very common sign it is condition for example this is this is your face okay this is your eyes this is your mouth so in this region the butterfly shape okay dermatitis you can see well you can see the rashes okay in this region so this butterfly shape uh, rashes or region is called as mother rashes so it's enough for today and next next video we will discuss further questions thank you